Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is another flight with the Atomasu Swordfish. I've managed to sort out a fair few of the problems since the last flight. I've actually done quite a few flights of this recently. I've uh, got a load of footage uh, put together. So as you might see, the takeoff was uh, a lot less hairy this time around. Um, no problems at all. Um, one of the things with the swordfish is um, I need to really put a little bit of up thrust on the uh, motors because when you're, they're fully open, they will um, want to pull the plane into the ground. So it's normally a quick burst at 100% and right back down to about you know 50, 40 percent um, on takeoff, and um, quite happy that way. Um, um, you might notice a couple of new bits on the uh, OSD since my last flight. Um, it's uh, been changed to Express LRIS, so rather than using the flat R9, the FR Sky R9, I've now moved it over and flashed all of my R9 gear to ELRS on 868, um, which now means I get to use Yapu on my um, transmitter, which is nice. Um, although there isn't a huge amount of bandwidth on 868 and um, I definitely still feel that Dragonlink have been trumped um, in terms of you know, a telemetry feed to your um, radio and to your computer, you can't do it to your computer. Although they have recently released their, um, their uh, airport which allows you to have another receiver and transmitter close by on another band, um, so 868 or 2.4, um, and that then allows you to yeah, have a full kind of Maverick down for RG pilots and you can play with the settings while the plane's in the air. Um, so that's what I'm trying to get to and I have my um, really beefy um, big boy that I've um, hinted to. Um, bought a few more pieces for it um, and uh, that will be going up later in the summer um, I can show you it's a kind of climb performance and all of that good stuff because it's uh, as previously mentioned quite an overpowered beastie um, but yes yeah, so this time we'll uh, have a bit more of a jaunt around um, we're a lot more comfortable with the model now um, know all of its quirks and stuff like that um, isn't too happy in winds approaching to 20 miles an hour we'll say that it does get barefooted around but um, the wind speed of about seven knots as you can see in the bottom right hand corner um, it's very happy with um, there's a little bit of getting knocked around here and there but uh, rather than that it's quite happy to say the least um, so Today it will be um, just a kind of flight around um, the near area. Um, have a little bit of a um, flight about halfway through the site. Um, sorry, through the flight. Um, when my wife was saying, "Oh, I can see a plane. It looks like yours," and I'm thinking, "Oh, I don't know, I don't know where you're looking." Um, and um, turned out there was a what appeared to be a little zod. Um, Talon flying over our airfield um, on its way out to, on a, an extreme BVR flight by the looks of things and um, you'll see me um, kind of um, try and chase, a, chase along with it um, because it flew quite low over the airfield with them more than I'd say about 50 foot actually um, so that would suggest whoever was flying it was sat on a hill somewhere because uh, it was quite low to the ground, um, but again we're going to see that a bit later on. Um, and yeah, so um, the other change I've made to this since the last video I uploaded is the new GPS. Um, you'll see in the top left hand corner we can now see 29 satellites and um, the plane knows where it is to 46 centimetres, which is excellent. Uh, I was quite pleased with that little GPS. Although uh, Walkstown recently released an M10 version um, as well, which is about 
a quarter of the cost of the Metax uh, Metaxas cis stuff um, and performs exactly the same with you know um, then they got to about you know 32 satellites I've seen at one point um, 33 um, so you did get a nice little um, uh, you know the positional accuracy with it um, you can feel a bit more comfortable knowing where it is and you know, if it does kind of plop down in, a, in the middle of one of these um, farmers fields somewhere um, I'll have a you know within within inside of a meters um, accuracy where to go pick it up from um, which is brilliant um, love that because um, yeah this uh, what you're looking at um, certainly has a few um, downed models and uh, that are still stuck in the weeds somewhere or embedded on a uh, riverbank uh, which I did have um, literally got embedded in the riverbank and I couldn't retrieve it so um, not without a boat and um, yeah it was just, just too much effort for what it was worth you know it was a 300 quid model it wasn't the end of the world so managed to get in there and pull um, the um, the electronic guts out and all the you know kind of good stuff out of it uh, but in the uh, wood you know as a balsa model uh, was left there so um, it was probably disintegrated by now um, but I did uh, try and look for it recently and I uh, did think I saw something but um, not sure <laughs> there's a few more planes or uh, well more than a few I think you'll probably find it 20 or 30 planes over dead in the uh, the slowly crushed apart over the years around this area so really old flying field that have been going well in you know since the 80s and 90s so um <clears throat> yeah um plenty of old boys down this uh, field but yeah all very nice people very happy to pass on their knowledge which is always brilliant um you don't always get out of people that would be uh you know just like to keep to themselves and stuff um but yeah just having a bit of a fly around the back of me um, the other thing I've done is I have upgraded my headset antennas so I've now got um, video aerial systems victory stubbies on the top of my headset and then I've got um, the same people uh, video aerial systems they have got their crosshair extreme um, separately polarized um, kind of uh, patch antennas but are some strange, you know, uh, version of uh, of a patch that isn't linear. So it um, has 10.5 VBR of gain. So, which is awesome. Although I think the real limitation is not so much the um, the uh, receiving capacity of the uh, headset. It's more the ability for it to transmit signal to the uh, aircraft and um, for it, you know, to actually have a hey I'm still here kind of packets back and forth um, which I uh, I think that will I'll have to put um, something a bit more directional on the um, transmit top right um, smart port or RP smart um, and I think that would frankly make all the difference it's probably going many 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 miles with something like that you know so you're pumping out a watt um, stick a 10 dbi gunner, uh, gunner? Uh, antenna um you know it goes from a watt to i don't even know what the um, logistics of it but it will probably well over 10 watts um once it's you know a high amount of gain is put through uh, the transceiver so um yeah it's gonna go absolutely miles um that kind of range it'll be a very very strong signal um so i think uh Bear in mind, um, I'm going to go a little bit uh, drawn to a bit further, but yeah, it's um, a really brilliant system, the Borg style. Um, a lot of people, you know, moaning about uh, Smear, and I've noticed on um, their Discord channel, and frankly, it's fine um, for for a fixed wing pilot. I mean, if you're a fixed wing pilot, I don't really see any benefit for you to go for an OFU free air unit other than having the 4K. Um, ability to you know um, be in 4k there is no difference um, in the air as soon as you get down and down, down and then the uh, ropes it is um, that's where I, I think the old day 3 does um, shine it does put out you know 
the smearing's still definitely still there when you light you could see it when we took off you could see a little bit of smearing then but up here there isn't as much change in the scene um, and the video codec you know it's obvious that the video codec doesn't need as much bandwidth to do the same job um, although um, you know I did have a recommendation to bring it down to 25 megabits and I really want to put it back up to 50 it does like uh, there is a noticeable increase in clarity um, you know it's, it's hard to see but once you've done it you can kind of see the little nuances between 25 and 50 and there is you know a lot clearer you can see you know while it's very clear at the moment I find it aliases a bit more um, that'd be the uh, best description it's a bit more shiny um, I don't know how to describe that it's, uh, um, yeah it's almost like it's kind of over sharpening it would be uh, the best uh, description um, and yeah so we're just kind of flowing down the river this uh, particular river has had uh, indeed a few models go into it um, <laughs> there's uh, yeah the some chap had a fire away a few years back and uh, ended up straight in the drink here. Um, and yeah, so uh, yeah, a little bit of a um, bit of a minefield. This um, kind of area, most cities for this is uh, just literally stream after stream after stream. It's like a little peninsula after peninsula across here. Um, every field is wrapped with a um, stream, so um, you know, there's a usually a, a disintegrating bit of wood and metal um, to get from one side of the stream to the next. Um, and uh, yeah, um, you don't want to you know, have your planes really going down in here. It, is, uh, it will turn into a many hour job going to collect it. Um, as you can see, um, you know, really the easiest way is to kind of like go up for, in the air and work out your route from the air um, to go and collect your model. Um, because if you look down here, you can see an entrance to this field. This is uh, the only way to get into a field about, you know, three or four fields back. Um, you know, it's, there's no kind of bridge to get over these streams. So you're either swimming or you're. Uh, yeah, go in the scenic route to get there. But nonetheless, it's um, you know, a risk of a hobby uh, in this particular area. But it is out in the woods, in, well, in the woods, so you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And in terms of you know, doing the hobby, it's the safest location one could possibly be. Um, you know, there's no risk to harm or to anyone, maybe a uh, you know, a, a knock on the noggin of a uh, cow, but that'll be the extent of it. Um, there's a few sheep around here as well, but yeah, the uh, farmers let them graze, um, keep the uh, fields fertile for whatever they want to pop on them. And um, yeah, often there's especially dairy farmers around here though, but um, you don't really see too much growing on them during the summer. Um, they tend to be implanted and stuff, so it's, I think they're, yeah. Um, the battle there for uh, meat farmers. Yeah, I'm not sure that doesn't have the industry well enough, but um, yeah, just uh, checking out the um, the amperage as you might notice, it's still off. Um, it has been um, quite a pain this amperage, and I'm um, still struggling with it. Um, obviously you can see there's two different sets of numbers, um, top left, top right. Uh, one is, the top left is my new current sensor, which is the Hall Effect sensor. And the right hand one is the inbuilt current sensor. Um, as I've been, you know, as I may have mentioned previously, I've been struggling with the accuracy on it. It's usually all over the shot, so I thought, oh, the Hall Effect should be a bit better. Uh, but alas, the uh, what it told you as a default to set it up with is nowhere near the truth. So um, next flight, I'm going to have to get the HD OSD tool out and reorganise everything, um, so I know what current sensors what and you know total my usage from um, the other current sensor. Um, I really kind of um, yeah go from there and hopefully uh, we can just place the other. Um, 
the other sensor with the Hall effect. But yeah, I'm just hoping that this one isn't so. Um, have so many issues really with the um, current when you change the battery set. So we've got two. We've got well, we've got four four 2200 mile full cell batteries as I've mentioned, and they um, are great batteries but um yeah the internal chemistry is obviously slightly different between them because if i change one set over for another set my you know the mark answer will just go out the window again um so it's almost like it's set to a set of batteries you know as soon as you change that set of batteries um it's no good again um so it's been a bit frustrating on that end i must admit um yeah it's uh Something I'm working on um, and should hopefully be there reasonably soon. Um, the next flight, I'm just going to use uh, what was set and uh, try again and um, yeah, give the um, you know, set the full effect and put the full total mile on there, um, which will be quite handy, I think, for working that out, and hopefully that one isn't quite as sensitive to different battery chemistries, because I can only, that's literally the only thing I can think of that might be causing the issue. Um, oh yeah, we've got uh, 32 um, satellites now, so they're uh, getting uh, down to a uh, resolution of uh, 43 centimetres in um, accuracy. Which is insane, really. It knows it itself, and you know where it is in the world to that level of accuracy. You can, you know, with RG Pilot, we can say, oh, "I want to take off here, and I want to go and land over there," and they would do so to within, you know, 0.3 um, of a meter of accuracy, which is uh, pretty insane, really, if you think about it. And you know, you can certainly see why the old Ukrainians have been um, using this technology um, because it's literally uh, an out-of-the-box weapon system um, which is uh, an unfortunate reality of uh, human civilization apparently um, I wish it wasn't but yes uh, it's uh, certainly been shown by the uh, um, Ukrainians, uh, what it can be used for, though, uh, you know, seeing all those models destroyed, oh dear, all those drones, um, you know, it's a, a right shame um, for absolutely no gain by anyone other than one man's ego. Um, yeah, it's uh, is what it is, I suppose. Um, but yeah, um, Ah uh, yeah, if you have a look here, this is um, one of the issues I'm having with the uh, cruise mode at the moment. It's, a, it's a, quite a real nasty, heavy uh, throttle oscillation. Um, and you see that kind of like bouncing at steering. It's, um, it's, it's not, um, um, not um, turbulence, it's the cruise model uh, mode um, setting. As you can see, I've just changed to... Um, you know, fly-by-wire A mode because I was getting a little bit fed, it, fed up with it um, do, doing that. So um, on the uh, on the net at the moment, looking at RG Pilot's um, documentation, and there's a right in there FAQ. How do I reduce throttle oscillation in auto flight? Which looks very useful for this particular problem. Um, so I'll be doing that. Um, implementing that and getting it changed. I think the main one I want to change is the throttle slew rate, although I want it, you know, if there's a blast of wind or something, I want it to be able to overcome said blast of wind, you know, so if it's going to, you know, um, on its landing approach and stuff like that, because um, I would like with my the big boy, which will be, you know, computer controlled, I'm going to have my laptop out and take it out down the field and all sorts um, you know we're going uh, full whammy with this um, and um, yeah kind of shows one through you know what RG pilots are really capable of and that's that kind of telemetry downlink and as long as you've got a bees knees radio link um, and really there's very few you know ERS is great don't get me wrong it's great but it's still no dragon link um, Dragon Link wins uh, by a mile if you want to be able to hook up your 
um, model to a um, computer mid-flight and change its parameters mid-flight as well. Uh, that's an important piece, uh, which is really incredible if you think about it. You know, it could be um, in God knows where, you know, um, and say, hey, um, yeah, I want to change this parameter. And it just beams it off through the middle, you know, through the air and hits your model, which is uh, fantastic. Um, really is cool that is uh, you know we've come so far with the uh, radio you know compared to where we were you know even 50 years ago now if you look back at the you know the 70s because it's kind of the advent of computing um, you know um, we certainly made some predictions and they weren't far off at all to say the least yeah it's alright I can have a drink there um, Again, a little bit uh, dry after talking too much, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's testing out the uh, kind of turn performance. One of the things with the swordfish is if it's a bit of a blustery day, um, the wings flex a little bit. And the problem with wing, wings flexing and you want to turn is um, you don't turn. Um, so um, really, this plane is. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to be firing it in anything more than about, uh, you know, the 15, 20 mile an hour wind. Um, anything more than that and it gets uh, a little jittery, hard to turn, hard to control. Um, and yeah, just a bit of a pain really. So, just something to bear in mind. Um, if you're going to be thinking of picking up a um, swordfish, and I do recommend you do. You know, if you're a model flyer and you're on the edge about picking up a swordfish, um, don't be. It's a great model. Um, buy the PMP package and set up your own FPV gear, um, especially if you're going HD. No, no need to buy the FPV and flight controller kit. Um, <coughs> and yeah. Um, the models also um, had a bit of a knock um, recently. Um, I had some issues. Um, actually, you could see it in my last video where I really wanted to kind of tilt right over uh, and kind of nail itself into the floor. Um, and unfortunately, it did when I tried an auto takeoff. Um, it just stalled and went straight into the floor. Um, turns out um, with the T18, I've had it a, a few years now, um, that they, if you get some dust inside the gimbals where the Hall effect sensor is, um, it causes all sorts of um, strange problems where the sticks work center. And I was always having like a kind of negative 100 ppm either side. And it was really impacting um, the model. So um, it was only after that kind of like turn over and smash into the ground where it broke its nose off um, that I investigated uh, what the cause was. And yeah, it was just that. It was basically giving it a constant um, leftover trim that the flight controller thought, hey, this is, I'm being commanded to do this and overriding its um, centering. Um, so that was. Uh, a bit of a, an annoyance to say the least but um, yeah it wasn't too bad of a damage while it broke the nose off it was an incredibly clean break um, so uh, do know if you do have a knock on your swordfish that um, when the uh, break in the model happens um, you know just a little bit of um, well, I've used um, some industrial strength for cyano but um, you could use you know, bits of looking blue or anything along those lines and it slots back together and you, you know, from, unless you're within about 20, 30 centimetres of the model, you can't even see the break. Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, you, know, you know, if it does have a knock where you're not diving into the floor at 30 miles an hour or whatever and it's just kind of falling down from, um, uh, you know, being thrown, um, do you know it's, uh, frankly, a field repair. So if you happen to have a, that sign over with you on the field and you uh, this happened um, you could easily repair it um, just by going it together wait 10 minutes and chuck it again um, be really that quite simple so um, always uh, handy to have around and 
yeah, just bear in mind if your TA team is getting um, getting really kind of shaky, kind of looking um, centering, then um, the first place you should look is um, your um, getting some, you know, getting the dust out of your uh, gimbals. So I just use a can of compressed air, you know, a little um, little pipette on the end of it, um, get it down into the nook and crannies. Um, did have to take the T18 apart for that though, so do bear that in mind. You will have to open it up and um, you know, put it back together. But it's, it was a job, it took about a few minutes to open it up and uh, same a few minutes to put it back together again. Um, I might actually modify it and put a, um, do a small hole in the bottom and install a uh, USB C charging unit. Um, that way I don't have to, um, I don't have to, you know, constantly play with the uh, thing so um, you know charge it and take the batteries out and all of that and it just gets quite annoying quite quickly um, so um, I'll have to investigate if they can do two cells um, I know they can definitely do one cell uh, um, but see how it gets on um, doing a second um, or I might have to buy a separate USB charging board um, for two cell batteries, um, I'll have to investigate that. Um, but I've got a pair of 5000 mAh uh, 21700s in the T18 at the moment, and like uh, you know, that'll even with the um, ELS module on the back of it, it's barely dent in it. Um, you know, you could probably leave that radio on most of the day, um, and it wouldn't have any problems. You know, previously I'd be lucky with an 18. Um, 650 batteries. I was getting about two and a half hours. I would say, and that was the with the Dragon Link on the back of it. Um, and I would say they're about half half the capacity of um, the uh, 21700 battery. So you're probably looking at around between five and six hours of um, kind of um, of battery life, which is more than enough to do. You know, for many people, especially if you know, you're flying your drones and what's not, it's only a um, you know, five minute go or six minutes at a go um, if you're not really rinsing it like anything. Um, yeah, it's uh, <coughs> quite, a, uh, um, yeah, quite a decent battery capacity at uh, 5,000 mile in the LVO, so if you can fit it, well recommended, well, well recommended. Um, it is an upgrade pack for the T18, um, which is was remarkably expensive what it was, but here's what it is at the end of the day, and I'm very, very happy with it. It's made a big difference for me. Um, so, if you're constantly charging your radio, um, that's how you go about doing it. Um, get some big batteries in it, or charge it as often, um, and you can, you know, have you know external accessories going in that are. Way. Um, yeah, so the ELRS system, which is, uh, I've actually got the 3.3 release candidate 1 on this, which added the D50 mode for the R9, uh, sorry, for the A68 900 megahertz um, band, which is called T900 or something like that. Um, not that I've used it. Um, my first flight with the RS didn't turn out too well because I accidentally had set the telemetry ratio to a one, one, in, uh, one by two, so I had my packet and a full lump of telemetry in it. And um, the entire, you know, even the full, full range channels turned into a slide fest, um, like, you know, stutter fest. Um, and only because, you know, if that was a model without flight control and I, I reckon I'd had, a, I'd had a, a, an extremely um, bad time but obviously if you've got your own APM to that tree you can have a flight control and you know people don't give them but yeah it's um it, do be careful with if you're on 868 don't be setting one by two telemetry don't even set one by four you know the absolute max you want one by eight one by sixteen or one by thirty two um, so I do know that um, the telemetry is quite delayed um, compared to, um, you know, if you can flip to between 5 and cruise mode, 
No, no, it was still taking like even five, six seconds for that my radio to pick up, but I've made that change. So, um, when that was coming out of Yahoo um, telemetry, so um, I would suspect if you're on 2.4 gigahertz, obviously you're going to have a much higher data rate, um, just because you can fit a lot more in a, in a, in a in that band, you know, if it's a um, older frequency, um, so the band will fall a bit higher and your telemetry rate will be a lot higher as well. Um, but I do hope that the LRS kind of improve upon that and, um, you know, uh, improve that data rate because uh, Dragon Link um, again kind of has been trumped with that kind of data rate, it's actually really quite good on that. And uh, whatever kind of protocol they develop for that, um, which is pretty proprietary, um, is um, again still unmatched. It's just a shame they never have any stock, uh, which is the biggest real problem with um, um, being with their dragon link at the moment. You just can't get hold of the receivers. Um, I've been trying to get hold of one now for two months, um, and they were briefly in stock last week and you know, today's the uh, 18th of June um, and yeah it was uh, yeah just really struggling to get hold of them so I about to stick a dragon link in this um, although the, apparently there is an issue with um, Matic just like spurting out crap on the 433 band so um, which I frankly believe I've noticed actually on my dragon on my dragon link in my big boy one so what I'm going to try doing is 3d print a container and wrap the container in um, tin foil <laughs> just like you know a tin foil hat um, no, but, um, and which should act as a Faraday cage um, and stop the um, you know the noise getting through obviously one thing i'll have to bear in mind is you know there's microchips in there so it will need to get some air from somewhere so i'll probably end up plugging a small you know two or three centimeter fan although actually i do have already installed a fan in there so i might be able to, if i yeah i'm sure i'll come up with a solution you know the gap in the side there so you know we can pump out um you know get some exhaust in there but as long as we can squish most of the noise with, with the kind of makeshift faraday cage um you know uh, we should, should be happy days um so yeah just kind of like flying over and um checking out um, some of the kind of fields on the other end there's a small pond down there um sheep in the top right corner um i was coming over here because i wanted to kind of test my um headset for some whatever reason that it likes to drop out around here down to like you know like one megabit it'll randomly go to and as you can see it's gotten down to kind of 13 and a half megs although it does look pretty you know regularly i suggest um the um yeah it's good kind of recover but it does do this it goes from 25 to nothing to 25 to nothing so it would the behavior was a lot better this time with my new um with my new um, video aerial systems and gear, it's they're a lot better than antennas compared to um, the ones that you can get, you know, that come with the walk sound system. Frankly, I just rec recommend you dump them, uh, they're crap, um, get something decent. Um, all of the antenna manufacturers will all work on this headset, doesn't matter what it is, um, just make sure you're going left hand circuit polarized and everything, or you're going right hand circuit polarized and everything. You're better off with left hand circuit polarized purely because um, you know that the the, the transmitters of ETXs when you buy them all come with the, with those antennas anyway. So you know unless you want to add additional cost by replacing them with right hand circuit polarized, you know, or just buy the um, BTX on its own without the camera um, or with the camera but no antenna. I don't think they offer that. But um, yeah, that'd be a kind of uh, way through it um <coughs> yeah just coming back up to the uh river of um swimming models um and so yeah it's got quite a wide this one uh, doesn't look at um from the sky but um you know that is about a good four meters across five meters across so it's uh 
um, yeah, decent kind of um, amount of water going through there. Doesn't seem to ever burst at banks. It does get a bit taller now here and then, and you know, and a bit lower during the dry season. But um, it's a uh, you know, quite a quite a um, yeah, nice sweet model. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just kind of um, flying uh, uh, close to the um, flying strip, um, climb back and around. Um, I think it was around now we had our kind of little visitor um, that my wife was calling out. Uh, So, um, one of the things um, I've recently read on the Walks Now um, Discord is Sneaky FPV apparently has a contact to the development team at Walks Now. Um, so he'd been working with um, them and also asked the community whether or not um, they could put together a video of um, previous firmware performance versus the new firmware because there's a lot of complaints about the range going down the toilet and the smearing being worse amongst um, you know various other bits and bobs um, so they've been he's been kind of um, trying to rally up the community for that so hopefully someone will uh, put together that so um books I can analyze it and you know oh actually you know there is a problem here um and um yeah kind of uh get it solved i mean ultimately i haven't really experienced it although i haven't actually really kind of pushed the system at all um you know just kind of flying around my immediate surroundings and stuff like that trying to yeah, keep within the rules um, uh, but um, apparently there will be a pathway for pilots to you know, legitimately do uh, DVR flights um, but that does appear to be um, that you know, be slightly more expensive because it looks like there will be you know the aircraft will have to be inspected before being allowed to do DVR flights um, so that will definitely be something to um, consider um, when um, you know, if you're going to be uh, want to do DVR flights. I think most of us do. Um, you might see from my channel from years ago before the regulations fell down upon our uh, legs. Um, you know, we used to be able to go out uh, a good old fair old way rather than being limited to our kind of immediate surroundings um so you know things have gone you know, back a little bit but um well they uh, you know i can totally appreciate why they want to regulate this stuff you know um aircraft's the most regulated industry um ever really um so um i assume that a similar level of regulation will want to be applied to unmanned aerial vehicles which is what we're flying right now um, especially the, for the autonomous type, which um, again um, we are flying as well. Um, you know, um, hands off to kind of large pilot for the work they've done over the years. Um, they have a, an extremely robust system now, um, and it's uh, yeah great to be able to use it with all of our models and um, yeah, you know fly around with all the right data and knowing that our model's going to be, um, you know, the RG pilot will keep the model in good shape while it's in the air and compensate for buffeting and the wings going everywhere and all of that um, stuff, especially in the wind. Um, yeah, it's uh, quite nice and, you know, it's nice to have the aircraft fly like a proper aircraft as well. Um, with the kind of fly-by-wire um, obviously there's quite a few aircraft out there that's still completely manual you know ones that you sit in um, but most days um, you know most of the new ones these days are all kind of enhanced with fly-by-wire um, I think that really does kind of um, help with the safety um, and stops really dodgy commands getting through um, to the flight control services you know, the 
pilots doing something they shouldn't be. Um, you know, one of the things that um, have brought down full scale aircraft is um, rinsing the rudder and literally gets to such a point that it gets ripped off the back of the plane and the uh, plane unfortunately goes into the ground. Um, it's uh, certainly a bit of uh, a dodgy one. Although, interestingly, while I was flying, I realised that my rudder is reversed. Um, yes, um, we'll see it in a little while. Um, the rudder's kind of um, you know, going all over the shop while I'm trying to test on it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, <coughs> a, bit, uh, a bit funky to say the least. Um, yeah, but here we go, we're just going to test out the um, turning performance and so see how far those uh, dots kind of stretched out on the uh, OSD. Um, that is exactly what I was doing there, um, and yeah, you can really turn on a dime, you know, that's a stick as far over, kind of, left as, um, as you can do it, um, and uh, yeah, just trying to uh, <coughs> give it a, you know, give a little bit of welly in, um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, how dark. <coughs> It's been a, yeah, quite a nice um, flight, um, this one, it was very calm the wind, um, not a lot of buffeting, um, I've still, the end one issue I do have is it keeps um, flipping off the tape I put on the, um, on the uh, propellers, um, so they end up getting unbalanced again, um, you can see a little bit of uh, shaking in there, um, and that's just literally the um, balance of the props being out, um, so that is on my kind of uh, list to sort out with something that's not going to get flung off every time I try and balance the props. Um, so the um, other things you might notice, you know, we've done 40 odd minutes now in the air, and this is actually my longest flight yet. Um, the cruise mode definitely seems to be a lot more efficient than myself manually um, controlling the throttle. Um, I've set a cruise kind of speed of about 26 knots, um, and it will try to keep to that for the most part, um, unless it gets buffeted out by the wind or whatever. Um, out there I go, realising that my rudder's um, the wrong way around. Um, so that was, uh, yeah. Um, <coughs> one thing that um, the I'll be bringing to the channel soon is um, some drone um, freestyle drone action. Um, I'm not the hottest um, pilot in the world when it comes to doing freestyle tricks, but I can do a decent amount. Um, just don't fancy risking a drone right against the floor doing so. So usually. Uh, yeah, get 100 foot up and um, blast it around the sky that way. Um, I did have a, well, I do still have a four cell drone, um, which are good fun, but um, the six cell uh, kind of variants um, do kind of win from um, the ability to kind of like, you know, keep the, the power and punch all the way through the um, six cell pack. Uh, whereas you notice you're starting to compensate with the uh, kind of throttle with uh, four cell, and that doesn't, you don't really need to do that with six cell, which is really quite nice. Um, yeah, so it's uh, that'll be coming to the channel soon. So um, if you, uh, it does have a walks now transmitter in it. I have a, a decent chunk of footage. I just need to kind of put it together and uh, put it onto the channel, really. Um, I've got um, probably about five or six hours of footage between the swordfish and the uh, um, and the drone. So um, yeah, so I'll be eventually going up to the channel and trying to keep to a bit of content every few weeks if I can. Um, obviously, I have to kind of set it through and narrate the entire video. So. Um, I do, um, you know, I'm sure some of you will not 
um, get to the end of the video, um, mostly because it's just too long. Um, so that is the only kind of downside and having a um, kind of fixed wing that has the level of endurance that this one does. Um, you know, it's uh, well and truly uh, an hour in the air um, and has no problem, um, you know, kind of getting there. Um, I wasn't actually going to kind of come down until the hour mark, but I was really starting to get uh, a bit cold um, as the sun had gone right down. And believe it or not, this is um, about half eight at night, um, so the kind of sensor on the um, Pro HD is really kind of um, you know um, going all out here and you can actually see it if you look very closely at the footage you'll notice there's a bit of noise starting to appear in the image um, and um, that seems to be when the kind of sensor is uh, starting to have to kind of compensate um, for the um, sun going down you can see it's just right on the horizon almost now um, not quite um, you know, time for the sun to go down below the horizon, but um, getting there and it's, you know, the old uh, light sun and shadows are getting very long. Um, so it is a kind of good um, test of what the uh, um, systems like to fly, um, you know, in the later evening. And as you can see, it's perfectly acceptable and really quite nice, actually. Um, now I've had various cameras over the years, um, especially on analog, um, I'm not sure if anyone remembers the run cam owl, um, which was um, brilliant during the day and also pretty good at night, but absolutely horrid during the transition hours, uh, dusk and dawn, um, horrid, um, absolutely almost unusable, but you know, it was just you look down with that camera and everything looked black. Um, and you know there was no kind of detail and no shadows and anything like that really. Um, it was quite a, uh, um, yeah, a bit of a um, disappointment that camera. Um, I'm pretty sure if you go back on uh, my channel, you'll be able to see an example of that camera um, and a note from myself saying uh, I wasn't too pleased with it really. Um, but you know uh, that was years ago now, and camera technology has really kind of um, gone forward, and especially with this kind of Starbiz Two sensor, um, I've got absolutely no complaints about it at all. You know, so really good quality, um, and um, deals with lower light situations perfectly, and doesn't um, you know um, kind of end up with you know no definition in the um, image at all. Um, so you know we're kind of coming up towards the end of the flight now. Um, I'm just trying to see um, how long it's going to take for the battery voltage because you might notice we're still at you know bouncing between 14.6 and 14.7. I think it might have just settled at 14.6. No, I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, um, there was still capacity there um, and obviously I couldn't use the um, the um, the MAR um, as uh, accuracy so I've literally just had to rely on the voltage to get an idea of where the uh, kind of pack is um, and this is actually a reasonably good indicator you know it's not perfect so I'd much prefer the MAR reading because um, that way um, you know I'd like to finish at about 20% um, I suspect I'll probably go on under that, although I haven't actually charged the battery back up yet to test that. Um, I do need to do that, and from that I will work out a reading to set the um, to set the right-hand sensor, and then I also need to update the um, the Hall effect sensor to output the my used. Um, so that would be is definitely on one of the um, kind of uh, bits of bobs to do yet. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things you might notice is the old bit rate drops in that turn behind us, and it wasn't really outside of the range of the um, of the 
victory antenna on my head. I must have been just really the turn. Um, there was certainly nothing, um, you know, it's clear line of sight. Uh, uh, it did the odd bit where it did drop down oddly there. And this might be what uh, people have been complaining about with the um, latest firmware. Um, it definitely seems a bit more unstable with the um, uh, bit rate uh, compared to 32. Um, and while I haven't really noticed it, I think it, I probably have in ways that I haven't really kind of um, thought twice about, to be fair, because uh, you know the image quality is all still there and it hasn't really been an issue. Um, so, um, my wife at this point has just asked, um, is the kind of plane going to be coming down soon? Um, and um, she was going to kind of uh, video it for me, what she did, uh, which was kind of her. Um, so yeah, just trying to kind of uh, draw it out at this point to see how much um, longer I can keep it in the air. You see, we're still at 14.6 volts, and you know, we're certainly not on a dive down yet. Um, so, an hour is certainly uh, possible. Um, and I think if we. Um, you know, for, for once I've settled the cruise throttle so it isn't kind of jittering and going all over the shot and up, down, up, down, and all that stuff and creating all sorts of torque problems. Um, yeah, it'd be kind of happy day. Oh, uh, quick note, see, I say, well, RSSI went down to 35 there. I think that was actually because um, we went over the null the antenna um, just briefly because um, I've got a Shotgun. I think it's a, yeah, it's about a 2 dB gain um, on me on it. I've taken off the mox on um, like 500 milliwatts. You don't need the mox on for what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, you don't even know the mox on if you're out of 20k. You know, um, they don't just don't see the need of the mox on for you know for what we're doing. If you want to do 50 mile, you know, 50 100 kilometers or more or whatever. Um, then a uh, you know a mox on is going to help you there, but um, not for um, around the diddle or around the uh, surrounding um, landscapes and stuff like that here. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of practicing out um, my initial um, run uh, for landing. Um, and uh, as you'll notice, um, I'm going for the more um, uh, adventurous route. I'm going to do a crosswind landing. Uh, mostly it's just a bit more interesting. I think that's a bit boring landing, to be fair with you. Uh, crosswind landing is kind of like having the uh, nose um, into the um, you know, into the wind, but you're still kind of going the other direction. Still, it always seems a, it's a bit funny um, when landing, but uh, cool at the same time. And then kind of like you know, spin your nose around and uh, um, with the rudder, and um, you know, line it up um, to land. So that's a general plan for landing coming up. Um, won't be much longer now in the air. Um, and uh, calm down and um, get it down in one piece. So, yeah, it's a, a nice little flight, really, and I enjoy flying the swordfish. Um, I am looking forward to getting my um, crosswind mini up, um, which is what I like to call my big boy, because it's a big plane and a big 16 amp hour battery in it. Um, with rumour goes it of um, it will happily cruise at about four or five amps, and with a 16 hour amp hour battery in it, um, that in theory means three hours, which I'm not sure my neck will take, but <laughs> we'll find out, I suppose. But, um, I'm just trying to bleed off a little bit of um, altitude at the moment. We're coming for a landing, um, obviously a little bit too high right now. So um, there's my wife at the end of the um, strip with her um, phone camera out, just um, taking a you know, video on it as it's flying around. Bless her. And this will be just going down into that kind of um, downwind of the um, downwind route. Um, and then we're going to spin around and get into our, you know, move into the upwind and into the final 
I'm just coming out far enough to make sure um, I give myself plenty of distance and I don't have to slap it down or drop a lot of altitude really quickly. Um, that's kind of getting in the lining up and now correcting for the uh, wind direction because um, obviously that's pushing against the aircraft and pushing us left. So we need to have the nose slightly into that. If, uh, now, um, as we get close, we're going to spin the rudder around. There's a the rudder, and down we come. And there we are. Thanks for watching, guys.